Hi, I'm Jasma. Let's hand paint some sugar cookies for the holiday season. So it starts with the cookies, and you can use any sort of cutout cookies for the base of these as long as they're nice and flat on the surface. I'm gonna show you how to make a very simple sugar cookie. So using my stand mixer with a paddle attachment, I'm gonna cream together the softened unsalted butter and white granulated sugar until fluffy. Don't forget to occasionally scrape down the sides. Then you wanna crack in your egg, which should be at room temperature, along with the vanilla extract or honestly any flavoring of your choice. And continue whipping this until everything is emulsified and grown in volume. And in the meantime, you want to combine the dry ingredients. So this is just the all-purpose flour, cornstarch, baking powder, and a little bit of salt. Add that to the butter mixture, and you wanna mix this on slow speed just until everything has come together. Don't overmix this or it will be quite a tough cookie. Lightly dust a silicone mat or parchment paper with all-purpose flour and transfer your dough onto it. I like to knead it a little just so it has a more uniformed shape. Then sandwich the dough with another sheet of parchment paper on top so that you can roll out this dough without anything sticking. And now that this is at my desired thickness, I'm gonna chill this until it becomes firm enough so that I can stamp out really clean shapes out of the dough. I like to freeze mine just so it speeds up the process, but you can also chill it in the refrigerator if you are making it really far in advance. To ensure that it stays flat, I have a baking tray here, and I don't have one large enough that can hold the silicone mat the right side up, so I just put it on the back. Into the freezer this goes, and once the cookie dough is firm, it's ready to be shaped. And with this piece of parchment, I just lay it straight onto the baking tray, and we can just put the cutout cookies on top. Then you can begin stamping out your cookies. If this gets too soft to work with at any point, just pop it back into the freezer. And as goes with any cutout cookies, try and cut these out as close to each other as possible in the dough, so you end up with the least amount of scraps that you have to rework. And this dough doesn't spread much at all, so you don't have to leave too much space between each one on the baking tray. As long as they're not touching, you're good to go. I also punched out some additional holes in the cookies because of how I want to paint them later on. These are gonna bake at 325 for 10 to 12 minutes until they're slightly golden brown. If you find them browning too fast, just cover them up with foil until they're fully cooked. Then transfer onto a cooling rack and allow them to cool completely. With any leftover scraps of dough, just knead them back together and then repeat the entire process. I made 31 cookies using this recipe, but the yield will be different for you depending on the size of your cookie cutters, as well as how thick you rolled out your dough to be. I can't give you a specific measurement for mine because I used a bunch of different shapes, but I rolled my dough to be roughly half a centimeter thick. Now we're gonna make the royal icing, which is the canvas for our painting. Royal icing is essentially regular icing, but made with egg whites. And this is what's going to give it a really white color and it dries a lot harder than regular icing. Since the egg white in royal icing is not cooked, I'm using pasteurized egg whites. This one's from Costco. And pasteurized just means it's been heat treated to kill the bacteria, which makes it a lot safer to eat. However, if you can't get your hands on these for some reason, you can just use regular egg whites. Just make sure the egg is really fresh. That's what I've been using for many years and I've made it so far, so I'm sure you'll be okay too. I'm using the stand mixer with a paddle attachment again, but you can totally do this by hand. So just combine the icing sugar with the egg whites and whip it until it becomes smooth, scraping the sides of the bowl as needed. And once it has come together, I do like to whip it just a little further to give it that really bright white color. The royal icing is ready to be used when it's at a consistency that is slightly thicker than flooding consistency. So it should be able to form lots of ribbons, but also disappear back into the rest of the icing pretty quickly. I'm using the dipping method to cover these cookies. If you're more comfortable with the traditional pipe and then flood method, go ahead and do that. But I find this to be much more efficient. And it also creates the thinnest possible layer of icing on your cookies while still having really good and even coverage. So if you're sensitive to sweetness like me, or if you just have Asian taste buds in general, this will be a more ideal method for you. So dip your cookie into the royal icing until you feel that the edges have been coated. Let it drip a little bit, and then using an offset spatula or a butter knife, carefully scrape off the excess. 
Then I like to shake the cookie a little and tap it on my hand to help it settle and create that really smooth and shiny flat surface. So just do that to all your cookies. And if you make a mess on the edges, all you gotta do is just scrape off the excess icing like I'm doing here and you're good to go. Whenever you're not using this icing, be sure to cover it so it doesn't dry out. But if it does, you can add some more water to it to get it back to its original consistency. Now for the fun part, the painting of the cookies. You do need to wait for the royal icing to dry completely before you can move on to this step. It takes a couple of hours and you just want to have the icing be totally hardened and matte on the surface. If you are making these far in advance of painting, after the icing is dried, be sure to store it in the fridge to prevent the butter from bleeding into the icing and forming blotchy yellow patches. Now for the painting, I'm using gel food coloring. This is the edible paint we are using. These are the ones by Wilton. They're super solid colorings. They last forever. And these are just some of the really basic colors that you need to give you pretty much any color palette. And I have some food safe paint brushes here. You're also gonna need some clear alcohol. Now this is what's going to dilute the gel food coloring and turn it into a paint that you can use onto the cookies. And once you're done painting with it, it's going to evaporate and leave the color behind. You can use drinking alcohol or usually what I use is just clear almond extract. It smells nicer, really any sort of clear extract will work. Now I've compiled some design inspo for myself. You can look up watercolor painted sugar cookies. I also made a video on this years ago that you can reference some designs for. And so may the painting begin. It's gonna take a while for you to get used to painting on a cookie. Royal icing is a tad slippery and it doesn't absorb immediately at first. So it might feel a bit strange, but just have tons of fun with it. This all functions very similarly to watercolor. So you can start with a lighter wash of paint by thinning out the gel food coloring with more alcohol. And this way you can build on top of that with more detail and just deeper colors to give it a really dimensional look. I did in fact channel all 10 years of my accumulated art lessons into these cookies and spend more hours on them than I'd like to admit, but that is only because my perfectionism is encouraged by the fact that these cookies are gonna live on the internet forever and I have to look at them for even more hours while I'm editing, but just remember these are cookies and they're going to be eaten. So just appreciate the experience. It was very therapeutic for me, even though my back was not okay after all of it. Um, but I think this would be a really fun holiday activity that you can do. Once the paint has dried out a bit, I did add some gold accents by combining edible gold luster dust with some of that alcohol, and I think it adds a nice shimmery, festive look. These are the designs I ended up creating. Feel free to take screenshots and use them as inspiration for your own. I'd love to see what you come up with, so be sure to tag me on Instagram. And if you're looking to make more cookies, I have two holiday cookie boxes linked for you with nine flavors to try out. Happy holiday baking!